good evening everyone and welcome to today's webinar so uh, this is our third webinar session with ktu the previous webinar uh, was on the topics uh, machine learning and uh, deep learning algorithms so today we'll be focusing on how ai is helping to build intelligent automotive solutions so as I said, uh, you will have many questions, questions related to topics and questions on what Axie offers to students. So as you all know, we offer a wide range of Campus Connect programs. Some of them are like, uh, we do conduct technical workshops at colleges and provide internship programs for engineering students in the field of automotive. So to know more about this, do visit our website and social media pages. So first of all, would like to take you through our video, which will help you to understand what we do. We are an automotive technology company providing software solutions for in-vehicle infotainment systems and instrument cluster. We have been able to bring life to the infotainment systems of the new generation versions of Volvo, Mercedes-Benz, Porsche, and Ford with more than six production programs. We are headquartered at India and have development centers in Japan, Sweden, and Germany. With more than 200 engineers, we support our customers throughout the journey from conceptual design, implementation, optimizations, and certifications to maintenance. We are an ISO 27001-2015 certified company and ensure strict compliance of automotive spice. Also, the project had several challenges such as third-party app store, internet connectivity, over the air update which were first time in industry. We could successfully overcome the challenges and were awarded a grade by the OEM audit. In our current instrument cluster development program for a North American OEM, our scope was to develop the full instrument cluster software stack and HMI in Kansa for five variants. We could achieve some of the critical challenges like fast food optimization and real time graphics. Our expert team with 300 plus man years experience makes us uniquely qualified to serve any specific needs of the automotive industry. To cater to the future needs of car makers and tier ones our R&D team is focusing on computer vision, machine learning, deep learning, 3D visualization and data analytics. Quick ramp up, a perfect culture match, high productivity and great quality are the characteristics that reflects Axie's approach to business. As you all know, Axia provides a wide range of automotive infotainment solutions. So in a nutshell, uh, we drive the future of vehicle experience. So I'm pleased to introduce our speaker, Mrinal, who's joining us from Trivandrum. So uh, Mrinal is working as an AI specialist in Axia. He is an expert in deep learning and holds a strong root when it comes to knowledge in programming languages like C, C++, and Python. So he's one of the strong hands behind our AI-based driver monitoring system. So before I hand over the session to Mrinal, I have a few points to cover about this presentation. So we would love to hear from you during the today's presentation. So if you have any questions, please feel free to send it in the Q&A link, uh, which is there in the YouTube comment session. We will be answering the questions at the end of the session. So make sure you are connected to our social media pages like Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn so that you don't miss any of our updates. So without further delay, I welcome our speaker, Renal, over to you. Thank you, Omar. So a uh, very good evening to everyone. So today I'll be taking a small session on how AI is helping to build uh, intelligent automotive solution. So let's get into that. So first let's check from the starting from the history to the evolution and when it came to the limelight. Uh, it basically began on 1950s, where Alan Turing introduced uh, some text on, and he have also introduced some papers on machine learning. But in this slide, I have uh, I am showing you that starting from 1642, because uh, that, at that time uh, Pascal has introduced uh, some some uh, some mechanical calculating machine. Uh, why I have showed from 1642 and other inventions of computer because without computer ai is not possible it needs a huge computing power so from 1950 to then 1955 where ai has been termed and coined by dr McElty, 
then uh, a natural language uh, program was introduced named as Eliza. Then in 2009, Google has built one driving car first introduced. Then and then uh, from 2011 to 2014, uh, then 2016, many uh, companies like IBM and has introduced some of the machines who has defeated world champion. It's named as uh, the machine named as IBM Watson. Then it is also in introduced AlphaGo. So such uh, evolution came and now you all can hear the buzz of AI. I think, uh, I think if I go a year back or two years back, there is one of the uh, human robot has been introduced named as Sophia. So this is overall uh, history of the AI and evolution as well as the how the AI came into the limelight. So uh, now let's check some of the stages of AI. So basically there are three stages. What is artificial narrow intelligence, artificial general intelligence and artificial super intelligence. So if I go to the artificial narrow intelligence, it is designed to perform specific tasks or it is goal oriented. Example is like a voice recognition, speech recognition or facial recognition. Uh, example, if I give a Siri, Alexa, these are all the type of artificial narrow intelligence. Now let's go into the artificial general intelligence. It is also known as strong or deep AI. And AGI or artificial general intelligence is a stage in evolution of artificial intelligence where machine will possess the ability to think and make decisions like human. So as I previously mentioned, I was a Sophia. It is still in developing stage. It is not has been achieved up to the level of artificial general intelligence or deep AI. So the last uh, stages of AI is artificial super intelligence. So it is a stages of AI where the capability of computers will surpass the human beings. Uh, it's still yet to come. I think in uh, coming years, I think 2050 or 2040 to 50, it will be implemented. Most of the things are on paper right now. So let's go and see what are the types of AI. There are four types of AI. One is reactive machine AI, one is limited machine AI, theory of mind AI, and self-driver AI. Let's go with the definition and the understanding. So uh, machines that operate, uh, operate based on the present data and considering only current situation. So if I give an example of the reactive AI is the IBM Chase program. Now the limited memory AI, so such AI, has a short lived or temporary memory that can be used to store past data and hence evaluate the future actions. Uh, example is, uh, yeah, self-driving, self-driving cars, which has a limited AI. Now let's go to the next type of AI that is theory of mind AI. The theory of mind AI has uh, not been fully developed, but research is happening in this area. It's a more advanced type of artificial intelligence. And this is a category of machine, which is speculated to play a major role in psychology for detecting uh, psychology of human beings or to mimic the human being psychology. So this type of AI is being used. And the last type of AI is self-aware AI. So ma machines have their own consciousness and become self-aware, still not developed. Uh, so these are all the types of AI. So now let's go uh, into the application part of AI, that is artificial intelligence. As you can know that in every sectors of the industry is trying to adapt the AI with the existing infrastructure they have. And if I go look into the some general applications of AI, that is Google AI powered prediction then writing apps like Uber, we uh, regularly use in our daily life, like speech recognition. Then self-driving cars, there are two, that is Tesla Autopilot and GM Super Cruise. And uh, natural language processing is one of the major application of AI. Then AlphaGo, uh, uh, previously I have mentioned. Then IBM Watson. And as you 
as we all use the such apps like Amazon, Netflix, we get recommendation. So these are all the applications of AI. So now if I look into the right side of my slide, so you can see that in the, every sectors of the industry, AI has been used. Uh, if I start from entertainment like Netflix and Amazon, then uh, in real estate, they just calculate the sales estimation of every year and retail and e-commerce site also uses as a customer service, automated customer service. If I go to the travel, uh, like where many airline companies use AI to predict what will be the price and what will be the passengers in, in, the, in each month. So now if I go to the banking sectors, many banks like HGFC, ICIC Bank, and other bank has used, also use some AI based customer services. Now, if I go to the manufacturing, many robots and robotic arms are used in assembly line for the production. And, and, and there is another, uh, another uh, sector, there is food. Everyone has ordered food from Zomato, Swiggy. So I think you, everyone have observed that there is a time estimation given that when your delivery boy will be coming and giving your food to your home. So that is also based on the AI. Next come to the healthcare. So as we all know what our world is suffering and many researchers and doctors are using AI to predict which person has a COVID-19 uh, symptoms and from the, from the lungs X-ray. And from uh, logistic and transportation also AI systems are used. So if I now go into some specific application to the automotive, uh, automotive industry, there's such application like autonomous vehicle, then adults, that is advanced driving assistance system. Then AI powered driving monitoring system. On the later half of the slide, I'll be explaining that, what our company Axia has developed it. Then connected vehicles to test automation, quality control, supply chain, and manufacturing. So these are very specific to automotive industry. If we go to the auto, autonomous vehicle manufacturers and their technology partners are working over time to develop AI driven systems to enable self-driving cars and adders. And I must say that this is a first growing technology segment in automotive market right now. It, and also driving monitoring systems and connected vehicle. Uh, there is some uh, network which is known as Vanitz, vehicular ad hoc network, where vehicle connect to the other vehicles and several AI, uh, AI algorithms is used for the connectivity to get the nearest vehicle. And in test automation, many robotic arms and in our Axia testing team has, has using AI powered te test automation in SWDL, in log analyzer and several others. And if I come to the quality control, the AI powered hardware can uh, visually inspect and provide super quality control on various products, such as if I say machine parts, painted car bodies, textures, metal surface, and many more. And in supply chain, in today's economy, automotive manufacturers have extremely complex supply chains that everyone is, every automotive engineer is aware of. With AI manufacturer, has implemented AI algorithm to gain greater control over the supply chain. And in the manufacturing unit, uh, AI enables applications that span the automotive manufacturing floors. And manufacturer uses AI driven system to create and schedule the workflow and enables robot to work safely alongside with the humans on the factory. So these are all the applications which is specific to the automotive industry. So uh, now I will be taking you to one of the video where, how, where you can visualize or you can relate how AI is used in several applications of in a car, in an automotive, that is uh, in a car driving recognition systems are used, biometric security, next generation sensing solutions, and also 360 camera precision, uh, self parking, these are all the applications uh, which is being implemented inside a car. So let's check that video.
So I hope uh, everyone got an idea of how AI is being implemented in the automotive sectors. So now let's check. So now let's check the applications of AI uh, of ADOS, that is Advanced Driver, Driver Assistance Systems. So in ADOS, a lot of sensors and cameras are used to assist a driver, which includes lane departure warning, forward collision warning, high beam, safety systems, traffic signal recognition. So on the slide, you can see, if I start from the front camera that Audi active lane assist has already implemented in some of the uh, major cars. Next is uh, ultrasonic sensors to assist the parking. Then it comes to the 360 camera. It has two cam rear camera and with, as well as 360 cameras to monitor the, the, the outsides of the vehicle. And there are other cameras also starting from infrared sensor, then rear radar sensor, crash sensors, front radar sensors, then infrared cameras. So these are all the sensors and cameras which are used in now uh, high-end cars, uh, which has added support. And also there are some lighters which are also used on the later half we'll be watching one uh, demonstration of some automotive company who has used lighter to achieve level four of automation. So these are all the sensors and cameras used. So now let's check a video where AI is being implemented in several features of ADOS. As I mentioned, uh, that these are the cameras and the features are for the heads of display, lane assist, then adaptive cruise control and many more. So let's go into the video and let's check how this, all the cameras and sensors helped in ADOS. The augmented reality head-up display projects the navigation direction straight into the traffic situation ahead as you're driving. When you pass 60 kilometers per hour, the standard lane assist system is able to recognize if the ID3 leaves the roadway unintentionally and can help you stay in your lane. The optional adaptive cruise control ACC with predictive cruise control allows you to maintain the maximum legal speed while keeping the permissible distance from the vehicle ahead. In this way, the ID3 helps you reach your destination more comfortably. Volkswagen. So hope you got the idea how ADAS is being implemented by the car manufacturer Volkswagen. Now let's check what are the applications of AI related to DMS, driving monitoring system, and Axia has developed it. An Axia DMS monitors driver behavior at Indian race, thereby ensuring the safe driving. So it can detect driver's eye face, head movements, emotions, behavior, and they are continuously monitored to assess overall driving performance. If any accident occurs or condition is detected based on the driver attentiveness level, depending on the driver alertness, the driver will be warned with a flashing light or any warning sound. So now let's check the DMS features. What how Axia has developed. So on the left hand side, starting from driver performance, it also it includes seat belt detection and smoking detection, and driver identity detection, which contains face recognition of the driver. And wellness monitoring is also there in the features of DMS, which includes heartbeat, heartbeat rate, emotion detections. And on the right hand side, if I go to the distraction detection. Uh, it has a lot of features starting from phone usage. If a person is is with busy with the phone while driving, the, the, the driver monitoring system will caution the driver. Then it comes to the eye guess direction where the driver is looking into it, is it towards the road or in the other side, then it also detects the head pose and also daydream detection. And the most important features of the DMS is drowsiness detection, but most of the drivers feel sleepy during their drives. So DMS can detect number of blinks, number of yawns, and overall we calculate our detection that how, for how long the driver is in the sleep, that is sleep detection. So these are the overall 
uh, features of the DMS, what Axia has developed. So now let's see the demo. Now let's see the demo of how Axia has developed this DM driver monitoring system. So on the left hand side, you can see the count of eye blinks and below that there is a yawns is as easy it is calculated per minute and below that there is a heart rate and the last one is phone detection if the driver is using any type of phones so it will be the, the signal will be changed into true on the right hand side it is detected as gaze detection as it's the yaw and pitch value is mentioned here and roll here also given the gaze if where it is looking the driver is looking down or upside up or right and below that there is the alertness level which will be predicted after calculating all the values so so let's see how it is implemented see now the driver is using phone so as soon as the driver uses his phone so the phone detection or the phone status has been changed to true and here are the gaze as the driver looks down it is showing down and as it looks towards front towards the road it is mentioned as road so now the alertness level is eight since she is using the phone and when she has stopped using the phone the alert level is decreased to two so this is the overall demonstration for how actually has has implemented the driver monitoring system using several artificial intelligence algorithm like CNN and several others. Now let's check what are the what are the levels of autonomy. As you all know, many companies have implemented autonomous driving, starting from Waymo. So if I start from the level one, the level one autonomy is uh, almost all cars have uh, nowadays which includes intelligent cruise control. If I go to the level two, the, auto, the automation can assist by centering the car within the lane, that is lane assist. And it is also known as partly automated driving, where system can take control, but driver remains responsible for operating the vehicle. Uh, there are other level that is level three. It is also known as high level autonomy or autonomous or automated driving, where human is still required and it is also known as conditional automation and vehicle can perform most of the driving tasks uh, and i go if i go to the level four the level four is a high level automation and in level four vehicle can drive without human human intervention or interaction and in the final level that is level five it is a full automation and vehicle perform all driving tasks under all condition and zero human attention or interaction is required in type of level five of automation and if i go to the level four there are several companies like waymo as well as navia a french company which is already building and selling such cars as a uh, as a level four shuttles in us and waymo is continuously testing their uh, their cars in the arizona so I want to show that video where that Waymo has introduced level four of autonomy and they are, have been there too much successful and they're continuously testing their self-driving taxi services. So let's check that video. In a suburb of Phoenix, Arizona, there's a fleet of 600 minivans shuttling people from place to place. Ordering one feels almost exactly like calling an Uber, except for one thing, the vans are driving themselves. It does feel like from when I first got in that it is just a normal car. Their vehicles are all over our roads. I don't think you could stand at a street corner or drive a couple of miles without seeing a Waymo vehicle. I know that some of this technology is scary for many of our citizens, but I think if we've seen other times in our economic arc that this has really opened up new worlds for people and new opportunities. This is my 33rd year in policing. And when I started in policing, uh, we had vehicles, obviously, but there were, there were no computers and no cell phones. 
pagers weren't even in existence yet. So to see this technology in relatively a short 30 year span is just absolutely fascinating. In 2004, the U.S. Department of Defense hosted a 142 mile driverless car obstacle course competition. The farthest any of the entrants got was a little over seven miles. And off we go. Good try, guys. The next year, the DOD tried again. This time, five vehicles completed the course, but a team from Stanford did it the fastest. That Stanford team was led by a computer scientist named Sebastian Thron. So I didn't anticipate this to become a race for speed. It's one of the, the most thrilling races ever. In 2007, Google hired Thron, and he created Google X. Two years later, Google X launched a self-driving car project. In 2016, that project spun off as its own company, called Waymo, under Google's parent company, Alphabet. Here's an example of the Waymo Chrysler Pacifica uh, minivan. There's nobody driving. There's nobody behind the wheel. The company says it's tested its vehicles in over 25 cities in six states. But the most miles seem to have been driven around Phoenix, Arizona. From the police department's point of view, I mean, our mission is to keep our city safe. So we recognize this technology as something that could really impact um, our, our roadways because the overwhelming majority of collisions are preventable. You get in the car and you have a seat and it has a start button. And it's pretty trippy when you can see the fact that the car is driving itself. It's amazing to see how well the brain processes information as a driver, to see the car do the same exact thing. It's great to be a part of history for my kids to experience. My daughter actually liked it a lot. <laughs> Right now, Waymo is doing two main things in the Phoenix area. Around 1,000 members of the community have access to its rideshare beta program, Waymo One. Users can summon one of Waymo's 600 vehicles 24-7 and ride anywhere within a limited local region. And these users are actually paying for the rides. It's not just a free demo. It also has a partnership with Lyft and makes 10 of its vehicles available to the general public via Lyft's app. I probably use Waymo maybe 10% of the time, uh, the biggest limiting factor is that it only goes in a certain defined area, mostly in Chandler and Tempe and maybe a little bit of Mesa. If it went all the way downtown, I would probably take it a whole lot more. The reason Waymo is limited to a small region is because its cars are autonomous, but only in specific locations. Everywhere it can drive has been carefully mapped and analyzed so that even before sensing anything new, the vehicle already has a good sense of where it is. The Society of Automotive Engineers came up with a set of standards defining the levels of autonomy a vehicle could be, ranging from zero to five. And right now, Waymo's vehicles are at a four, capable of full autonomy, but only... So uh, these are uh, these are the small demo demonstration of how level four uh, autonomy has been used. And Waymo has implemented it, and it is running successfully on the roads. So uh, I think you all have understood that, and you can think that what will be the future of automotive technology in upcoming years. And many researchers forecast that by 2025, we'll, we'll get to see approximately 8 million autonomous or semi-autonomous vehicle on the road. Uh, I think in India also will be hope to see such type of cars. So that's all from my side today. So if you have any type of doubts and questions, you can ask on the mentioned link of the YouTube comment. On the YouTube comment, you will get the link. You can ask. Thank you. Thank you, Mranal. Uh, we'll go ahead and take some time for questions now. So just a reminder, please be sure to type your questions in the link, which is there in the YouTube comment section.
I would like to answer a question from Sri Ram, which is in our YouTube comments. How can we reduce the rain reflection in the windshield glass? Like uh, the solution on AI for this uh, would be like there are some algorithms using auto encoders and some uh, optimizers where we can uh, remove the noise or any kind of reflections to a, to an extent in an image. Uh, so using that maybe we can uh, uh, reduce the reflection or but not to the complete extent but it still is better than uh, the usual one. So we can remove the reflection uh, using some big learning technologies, uh, algorithms like auto encoders and uh, some optimizers. There are some papers which are uh, which talks about this, and there are some implementations. So I think uh, I answered that question. Can you please post uh, all the questions in the mentioned link? What is there in the above the presentation? Please try to questions on this link, slide dot app dot. Yeah, I got one. Uh, I got one questions from uh, Theris Davis. Uh, he has asked uh, whether training will with some data set and testing with another data set will be will it be more beneficial to get uh, better outcomes yeah definitely in machine learning algorithm when we train there is a ratio conventional ratio like 80 20 where we separate the data set 80 percent of the data set is for the training and for the validation there is 20 percent of the data set and with the, the, the data set which we train is is a different and what we test or validate is different. So yeah, definitely it's more beneficial. I hope I have answered uh, David's questions. So there is one question in the driver monitoring system of Axia, uh, like is, it, is it possible to just Python libraries? Uh, I think uh, like what we are, what we use is a combination of Python and CPP. So if you have to go, uh, like anyhow, we have to use an SOC for uh, uh, running it on a uh, like in a car environment. So uh, CPP is a greater uh, has a greater speed compared to Python on SOCs. So we use CPP and Python in combination. I think I answered that question. So I would like to answer the uh, question which I took previously, since there was a uh, uh, sound issues. So uh, we use the Python. We use Python and CPP both, uh, since we use a SOC based solution for DMS. So I think uh, yeah, CPP and Python. 
completely we can uh, use it for BMS. So I think I've answered that question. Uh, I need to add one, two points that there are several libraries available for uh, for the machine learning. That is TensorFlow, Py, PyTorch, Scikit-Learn. Uh, so these are all the libraries available uh, using Python. So here there is another question whether training with some data set and testing with another data set will be more beneficial. So uh, like how the training and testing data should be related is it should be in the same distribution uh, whatsoever. So if the uh, testing data is out of the distribution of your training data, then your model will fail uh, like when your AI will uh, uh, various difficulties to predict uh, actual values. So it has to be in the same distribution uh, unless it is in the same distribution in non the results. So I think I answered that question. So I would like to answer another question from Sudarshana. Uh, the question is how, how AI is applied in ECUs. So in ECUs, uh, the, like not in all the ECUs AI are applied. Uh, there are a few ECUs in which AI is applied like uh, the uh, head unit or infotainment system, which is again an ECU. There, if you uh, like, there are some uh, pro, uh, there are some cars which has chatbot inbuilt. So those is that is again uh, AI based model. So most of the time, how it is done is the AI system is trained in a remote uh, uh, place or in cloud, and then a running uh, AI model will be there in the EC. And there are some. Uh, situations where we will have to get the live uh, tra training for the ECU or any other solution. So that time we use a reinforcement type of learning. Uh, if the ECU is quite capable of uh, training the model, then we can use it for tra uh, training as well. So that is how AI is uh, used in ECU since ECU is again an embedded, uh, embedded device. So I think I answered that question as well.
I got another question from I think some name uh, devil about sensor fusion. I, yeah, it's sensor fusion is a it's making all the inputs from different cameras and sensors for multiple lighters also lighters and camera and put and form a single model. So yeah, it is used in autonomous vehicle, and it helps in the helps the model to to predict more accurate because of the balances and when the and the same all the sensor data and lidars are get, get get together in this 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 I think I. I hope uh, I have answered, I've cleared sensor fusion and the upcoming sessions we have a list out which includes these sensor fusions and many other, uh, many other machine learning algorithms and uh, AI algorithms also including sensor fusion and other applications what are uh, used in autonomous vehicle and self-driving cars. It's clear, right? So the sensor fusion actually consolidates all the data from the sensor to a single model, and to, it will be easy if you use AI for doing the prediction and all. Uh, I want to add one point that it is basically a process like sensor fusion is a process since as I have mentioned in the previous slides there are lots of cameras and sensors are used in errors so it's just a process of fetching all the data from different sensors and cameras and put together for a better prediction and big better results So one question from Sudarshan, that means uh, whether sensor, um, whether edge computing is required for, me, let me check the question again, whether edge uh, computing is, is a viable model for the moment. Okay, I think it's already answered. And there are lots of questions we are coming uh, in the YouTube comments and 
uh, our panelists are answering that. So just trying to read it out. Uh, one question is we got from Sudarshan uh, or something, AK. Uh, the the question is for auto for automotives. Okay, for automotives, whether edge computing is must for efficient real time AI response. And our panelists have answered to that questions. Yes, edge computing is a viable model at the moment for the real time computing. And Ashley Babu has uh, questions, another uh, question that is, is it applicable in India? And our panelists have answered that. I, th I hope he's asking related to some levels of autonomy or so our panelists have answered our engineers are working for autonomous project, but not in for the Indian market. And again, there's questions coming uh, from so what is the challenges in Indian context? The answer we gave is in the case of autonomous car, reliable infrastructure is a key, uh, which is lagging in India at the moment. There is one question. Uh, what is the approximate time that will take to train an AI system? Uh, so this question doesn't have a proper uh, like uh, answer, but I would try to explain how it varies. So it depends on the model complexity and the solution complexity. And it also depends on the hardware that you use for the training. If you have a high-end GPU along with a very good uh, processing unit, then you uh, then it still uh, it depends. Then the solutions uh, training time will be reduced compared to just training it on a CPU. So, so it again uh, depends on the uh, model or uh, the solution complexity as well. So it is not a there is no fixed uh, time interval what we can tell for uh, how uh, what how much time it takes. So uh, that is how it is. And I think I answered that question. And to answer, uh, like not answer, and to read out one question from Anusvi SS. Sir, in India, please explain the chances of autonomous driving. So we have answered that in India, we will we'll definitely see L2 and L3, that is level 2 and level 3 of autonomous car in the near future, but due to lack of infrastructure, as we previously mentioned, it's very difficult for in upcoming years to come. We can hope after 5 years or 10 years, we will definitely see such cars in our Indian roads. So I would like to answer one question from Ashwin, who asks, uh, how is AI trained in automotive field? Uh, is it directly on road collecting uh, real-time data? So this, uh, like, there are a few, many things or many types of uh, learning uh, when the model goes into a car, uh, where uh, So I would like to answer this question, uh, which is, uh, is uh, how AI is uh, AI trained in automotive field? Is it directly on road collecting real-time data? 
So sometimes, uh, like most of the times, the data will be collected from the car, uh, and there should be a pre, uh, like a matured uh, uh, model which will be able to, uh, which uh, which we will use as a uh, benchmark model, and later then we'll collect uh, the data from the car as well and uh, train the model more efficient because there are so many miscellaneous cases which only comes when uh, when we collect the data from the roads uh, in real time so we have we have to collect the data from uh, the car in real time i think i have answered that question There is another question from Sudarshana, where, whether reinforcement learning is applicable in this field. Uh, reinforcement learning is uh, uh, applicable in automotive also, um, but it is not. Uh, it is not allowed to take some crucial uh, decisions. Maybe uh, we, we can use that to um, like uh, select. Uh, Sound based on your mood and based on your feedback, maybe uh, that can be done. But most of the crucial decisions can't we can't rely on the reinforcement learning model. I think I answered that question. Uh, I'll be taking, I think this is the last questions we are taking from others, Babu. Why are they, uh, sorry, I think there are lots of questions coming from others. Babu. Okay, from, uh, I think, Arvind, what are the main issues that uh, we face in designing self-driving uh, cars in India as compared to foreign countries? I think uh, lack, lack of infrastructure, what self-driving car needs, it's... Uh, that is the data and relevant data and relevant infrastructure for the for the for generating such data that is lagging in our country Um, Nirmal, I think uh, we can wrap up the session. It's five. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, so thank you all for your time and feedback on the session. So happy to know that uh, you found the session very informative. So we'll be conducting more advanced sessions.
so for more updates on the upcoming webinars and updates on the latest automotive technologies follow us on linkedin instagram and facebook thanks again for joining us today and we'll see you next time